Animal Farm is a beast fable, one in the form of a satirical allegorical novella, by George Orwell, first published in England on 17 August 1945. 2. 3. It tells the story of a group of anthropomorphic farm animals who rebel against their human farmer, hoping to create a society where the animals can be equal, free, and happy. Ultimately, the rebellion is betrayed and, under the dictatorship of a pig named Napoleon, the farm ends up in a state as bad as it was before. Eric Arthur Blair, the 25th of June 1903 to the 21st of January 1950, was an English novelist, essayist, journalist, and critic who wrote under the name George Orwell. One, his work is characterized by lucid prose, social criticism, opposition to totalitarianism, and support of democratic socialism. Two, Orwell produced literary criticism, poetry, fiction and polemical journalism. He is known for the allegorical novella Animal Farm 1945 and the dystopian novel 1984-1949. His nonfiction works, including The Road to Wigan Pier 1937 documenting his experience of working class life in the industrial north of England, and Homage to Catalonia 1938, an account of his experiences soldiering for the Republican faction of the Spanish Civil War 1936-1939, are as critically respected as his essays on politics, literature, language and culture. Born in India, Blair was raised and educated in England from when he was one year old. After school he became an imperial policeman in Burma, before returning to Suffolk, England, where he began his writing career as George Orwell, a name inspired by a favorite location, the River Orwell. He made a living from occasional pieces of journalism, and also worked as a teacher or bookseller while living in London. From the late 1920s to the early 1930s, his success as a writer grew and his first books were published. He was wounded fighting in the Spanish Civil War, leading to his first period of ill health on return to England. During the Second World War he served as a sergeant in the Greenwich Home Guard 1940-41, worked as a journalist and, between 1941 and 1943, worked for the BBC. The 1945 publication of Animal Farm led to fame during his lifetime. During his final years, he worked on 1984 and moved between London and the Scottish island of Jura. 1984 was published in June 1949, less than a year before his death. Orwell's work remains influential in popular culture and in political culture, and the adjective, Orwellian, describing totalitarian and authoritarian social practices, is part of the English language, like many of his neologisms, such as, Big Brother, Thought Police, Room 101, Newspeak, Memory Hole, Doublethink, and, Thought Crime. 3, 4, in 2008, the Times named Orwell the second greatest British writer since 1945. 5. According to Orwell, Animal Farm reflects events leading up to the Russian Revolution of 1917 and then on into the Stalinist era of the Soviet Union, a period of time when Russia lived under the communist ideology of Joseph Stalin. 1. For Orwell, a democratic socialist, 5. Was a critic of Stalin and hostile to Moscow-directed Stalinism, an attitude that was critically shaped by his experiences during the Barcelona May Days conflicts between the POUM and Stalinist forces during the Spanish Civil War. 6. A. In a letter to Ivan David, Orwell described Animal Farm as a satirical tale against Stalin un conte satirique contre Stalin. 7. And in his essay, Why I Write, 1946 wrote, Animal Farm was the first book in which I tried, with full consciousness of what I was doing, to fuse political purpose and artistic purpose into one whole. 8. The original title was Animal Farm, a fairy story, but U.S. publishers dropped the subtitle when it was published in 1946, and only one of the translations during Orwell's lifetime, the Telugu version, kept it. Other title variations include subtitles like, a satire, and, a contemporary satire. 7. Orwell suggested the title Union des Republiques Socialistes Animales for the French translation, which abbreviates to Ursa, the Latin word for, bear, a symbol of Russia. It also played on the French name of the Soviet Union, Union des Republiques Socialistes Soviétiques. 7. Orwell wrote the book between November 1943 and February 1944, when the United Kingdom was in its wartime alliance with the Soviet Union against Nazi Germany, and the British intelligentsia held Stalin in high esteem, a phenomenon Orwell hated. B. The manuscript was initially rejected by several British and American publishers, nine, including one of Orwell's own, Victor Gollinch, which delayed its publication. It became a great commercial success when it did appear as international relations and public opinion were transformed as the wartime alliance gave way to the Cold War. 10. 
Time magazine chose the book as one of the 100 best English language novels 1923 to 2005 11. It also featured at number 31 on the Modern Library list of best 20th century novels, 12, and number 46 on the BBC's The Big Read poll. 13. It won a retrospective Hugo Award in 1996 14 and is included in the Great Books of the Western World selection. 1 5. Plot Summary Edit the animal populace of the poorly run manor farm near Willingdon, England, is ripened for rebellion by neglect at the hands of the irresponsible and alcoholic farmer, Mr. Jones. One night, the exalted boar, Old Major, holds a conference, at which he calls for the overthrow of humans, and teaches the animals a revolutionary song called, Beasts of England. When Old Major dies, two young pigs, Snowball and Napoleon, assume command and stage a revolt, driving Mr. Jones off the farm and renaming the property, Animal Farm. They adopt the seven commandments of animalism, the most important of which is, all animals are equal. The decree is painted in large letters on one side of the barn. Snowball teaches the animals to read and write, while Napoleon educates young puppies on the principles of animalism. To commemorate the start of Animal Farm, Snowball raises a green flag with a white hoof and horn. Food is plentiful, and the farm runs smoothly. The pigs elevate themselves positions of leadership and set aside special food items, ostensibly for their health. Following an unsuccessful attempt by Mr. Jones and his associates to retake the farm, later dubbed the Battle of the Cowshed, Snowball announces his plans to modernize the farm by building a windmill. Napoleon disputes this idea, and matters come to a head, which culminates in Napoleon's dogs chasing Snowball away and Napoleon effectively declaring himself supreme commander. Napoleon enacts changes to the governance structure of the farm, replacing meetings with a committee of pigs who will run the farm. Through a young corker named Squealer, Napoleon claims credit for the idea of building the windmill, claiming that Snowball was only trying to win animals to his side. The animals work harder with the promise of easier lives with the windmill. Weep animals find the windmill collapsed after a violent storm, Napoleon and Squealer persuade the animals that Snowball is trying to sabotage their project and begin to purge the farm of animals accused by Napoleon of consorting with his old rival. When some animals recall the Battle of the Cowshed, Napoleon, who was nowhere to be found during the battle, gradually smears Snowball to the point of saying he is a collaborator of Mr. Jones, even dismissing the fact that Snowball was given an award of courage while falsely representing himself as the main hero of the battle. Beasts of England, is replaced with, Animal Farm, while an anthem glorifying Napoleon, who is presumably adopting the lifestyle of a man comrade Napoleon, is composed and sung. Napoleon then conducts a second purge, during which many animals who are alleged to be helping Snowball in plots are executed by Napoleon's dogs, which troubles the rest of the animals. Despite their hardships, the animals are easily placated by Napoleon's retort that they are better off than they were under Mr. Jones, as well as by the sheep's continual bleeding of, four legs good, two legs bad. Mr. Frederick, a neighboring farmer, attacks the farm, using blasting powder to blow up the restored windmill. Although the animals win the battle, they do so at great cost, as many, including Boxer the workhorse, are wounded. Although he recovers from this, Boxer eventually collapses while working on the windmill, being almost 12 years old at that point. He is taken away in a knacker's van and a donkey called Benjamin alerts the animals of this, but Squealer quickly waves off their alarm by persuading the animals that the van had been purchased from the knacker by an animal hospital and that the previous owner's signboard had not been repainted. Squealer subsequently reports Boxer's death and honors him with a festival the following day. In truth, Napoleon had engineered the sale of Boxer to the knacker, allowing him and his inner circle to acquire money to buy whiskey for themselves. Years pass, the windmill is rebuilt and another windmill is constructed, which makes the farm a good amount of income. However, the ideals that Snowball discussed, including stalls with electric lighting, heating, and running water, are forgotten, with Napoleon advocating that the happiest animals live simple lives. Snowball has been forgotten, alongside Boxer, with, the exception of the few who knew him. Many of the animals who participated in the rebellion are dead or old. Mr. Jones is also now known to be dead, having, died in an inebriate's home in another part of the country. The pigs start to resemble humans, as they walk upright, carry whips, drink alcohol, and wear clothes. The seven commandments are abridged to just one phrase, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. The maxim, four legs good, two legs bad, is similarly changed to, four legs good, two legs better.
Other changes include the hoof and horn flag being replaced with a plain green banner and old major's skull, which was previously put on display, being reburied. Napoleon holds a dinner party for the pigs and local farmers, with whom he celebrates a new alliance. He abolishes the practice of the revolutionary traditions and restores the name, the manor farm. The men and pigs start playing cards, flattering and praising each other while cheating at the game. Both Napoleon and Mr. Pilkington, one of the farmers, play the ace of spades at the same time and both sides begin fighting loudly over who cheated first. When the animals outside look at the pigs and men, they can no longer distinguish between the two. Characters. Edit. Pigs. Edit. Old Major and Aged Prize Middle White Boar provides the inspiration that fuels the rebellion. He is also called Willingdon Beauty when showing. He is an allegorical combination of Karl Marx, one of the creators of communism, and Vladimir Lenin, the communist leader of the Russian Revolution and the early Soviet nation, in that he draws up the principles of the revolution. His skull being put on revered public display recalls Lenin, whose embalmed body was left in indefinite repose. 16. By the end of the book, the skull is reburied. Napoleon, a large, rather fierce-looking Berkshire boar, the only Berkshire on the farm, not much of a talker, but with a reputation for getting his own way. 17. An allegory of Joseph Stalin, 16. Napoleon is the leader of Animal Farm. Snowball Napoleon's rival and original head of the farm after Jones' overthrow. His life parallels that of Leon Trotsky, 16. Although there is no reference to Snowball having been murdered, as Trotsky was, he may also combine some elements from Lenin. 18. C. Squealer a small, white, fat corker who serves as Napoleon's second-in-command and minister of propaganda, is a collective portrait of the Soviet nomenclatura and journalists, such as of the National Daily Pravda, the truth able to justify every twist and turn in Stalin's policy. 16. Minimus a poetic pig who writes the second national anthem of Animal Farm after the singing of, Beasts of England, is banned, later he composes a poem, Comrade Napoleon. Literary theorist John Rodden compares him to the poet Vladimir Mayakovsky, 19, who eulogized Lenin and the Soviet Union, although Mayakovsky neither wrote anthems nor praised Stalin in his poems. The piglets hinted to be the children of Napoleon and are the first generation of animals subjugated to his idea of animal inequality. The young pigs four pigs who complain about Napoleon's takeover of the farm but are quickly silenced and later executed, the first animals killed in Napoleon's farm purge. Probably based on the great purge of Grigory Zinoviev, Lev Kamenev, Nikolai Bukharin, and Alexei Rykov. Pinkai a minor pig who is mentioned only once, he is the taste tester that samples Napoleon's food to make sure it is not poisoned, in response to rumors about an assassination attempt on Napoleon. Humans. Edit. Mr. Jones a heavy drinker who is the original owner of Manor Farm, a farm in disrepair with farmhands who often loaf on the job. He is an allegory of Russian Tsar Nicholas II, 20 who abdicated following the February Revolution of 1917 and was murdered, along with the rest of his family, by the Bolsheviks on 17 July 1918. The animals revolt after Jones goes on a drinking binge, returns hungover the following day and neglects them completely. Jones is married, but his wife plays no active role in the book. She seems to live with her husband's drunkenness, going to bed while he stays up drinking until late into the night. In her only other appearance, she hastily throws a few things into a travel bag and flees when she sees that the animals are revolting. Towards the end of the book, Napoleon's favorite sow wears her old Sunday dress. Mr. Frederick the tough owner of Pinchfield Farm, a small but well-kept neighboring farm, will briefly allies with Napoleon. 21, 22, 23, 24 Animal Farm shares land boundaries with Pinchfield on one side and Foxwood on another, making Animal Farm a buffer zone between the two bickering farmers. The animals of Animal Farm are terrified of Frederick, as rumors abound of him abusing his animals and entertaining himself with cockfighting. Napoleon allies with Frederick to sell surplus timber that Pilkington also sought, but is enraged to learn Frederick paid him in counterfeit money. Shortly after the swindling, Frederick and his men invade Animal Farm, killing many animals and destroying the windmill. The brief alliance and subsequent invasion may allude to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and Operation Barbarossa. Mr. Pilkington the easygoing but crafty and well-to-do owner of Foxwood Farm, a large neighboring farm overgrown with weeds. Pilkington is wealthier than Frederick and owns more land, but his farm needs care as opposed to Frederick's smaller but more efficiently run farm. Although on bad terms with Frederick, 
Pilkington is also concerned about the animal revolution that posed Jones and is worried that this could also happen to him. Mr. Wimper a man hired by Napoleon to act as the liaison between animal farm and human society. At first, he acquires necessities that cannot be produced on the farm, such as dog biscuits and paraffin wax, but later he procures luxuries like alcohol for the pigs. Equines. Edit. Boxer Alloyal, kind, dedicated, extremely strong, hard-working, and respectable cart horse, although quite naive and gullible. 27 Boxer does a large share of the physical labor on the farm. He is shown to hold the belief that Napoleon is always right. At one point, he challenged Squealer's statement that Snowball was always against the welfare of the farm, earning him an attack from Napoleon's dogs. But Boxer's immense strength repels the attack, worrying the pigs that their authority can be challenged. Boxer has been compared to Alexei Stokhanov, a diligent and enthusiastic role model of the Stokhanovite movement. 28 He has been described as faithful and strong. 29 He believes any problem can be solved if he works harder. 30 When Boxer is injured, Napoleon sells him to a local knacker to buy himself whiskey, and Squealer gives a moving account, falsifying the circumstances of Boxer's death. Molly is self-centered, self-indulgent, and vain young white mare who quickly leaves for another farm after the revolution, like those who left Russia after the fall of the Tsar. 31 She is only once mentioned again. Clover a gentle, caring mare, who shows concern, especially for Boxer, who often pushes himself too hard. Clover can read all the letters of the alphabet, but cannot put words together. Benjamin a donkey, one of the oldest, wisest animals on the farm, and one of the few who can read properly. He is skeptical, temperamental and cynical, his most frequent remark is, life will go on as it has always gone on that is, badly. Academic Morris Dickstein has suggested there is, a touch of Orwell himself in this creature's timeless skepticism, 32 and indeed, friends called Orwell, Donkey George, after his grumbling Donkey Benjamin, in Animal Farm. 33 Benjamin manages to evade the purges and survive despite the threat he potentially poses given his knowledge, his age, and his equivocal, albeit apolitical, positions. Other Animals. Edit. Muriel a goat who is another of the oldest, wisest animals on the farm and friends with all of the animals on the farm. Similar to Benjamin, Muriel is one of the few animals on the farm who is not a pig but can read. She survives, as does Benjamin, by eschewing politics. The puppy's offspring of Jesse and Bluebell, the puppies were taken away at birth by Napoleon and raised by him to serve as his powerful security force. Moses the Raven, Mr. Jones is a special pet, was a spy and a tail bearer, but he was also a clever talker. 34 Initially following Mrs. Jones into exile, he reappears several years later and resumes his role of talking but not working. He regales Animal Farm's denizens with tales of a wondrous place beyond the clouds called Sugar Candy Mountain, that happy country where we poor animals shall rest forever from our labors. Orwell portrays established religion as the black raven of priestcraft promising pie in the sky when you die, and faithfully serving whoever happens to be in power. His preaching to the animals hardens them, and Napoleon allows Moses to reside at the farm, with an allowance of a gill of beer daily, akin to how Stalin brought back the Russian Orthodox Church during the Second World War. The sheep they are not given individual names or personalities. They show limited understanding of animalism in the political atmosphere of the farm, yet nonetheless, they are the voice of blind conformity 32 as they bleat their support of Napoleon's ideals with jingles during his speeches and meetings with Snowball. Their constant bleeding of, four legs good, two legs bad, was used as a device to drown out any opposition or alternative views from Snowball, much as Stalin used hysterical crowds to drown out Trotsky. 35 Towards the end of the book, Squealer, the propagandist, trains the sheep to alter their slogan to four legs good, two legs better, which they dutifully do. The hens unnamed. The hens are promised at the start of the revolution that they will get to keep their eggs, which are stolen from them under Mr. Jones. However, their eggs are soon taken from them under the premise of buying goods from outside Animal Farm. The hens are among the first to rebel, albeit unsuccessfully, against Napoleon. They are brutally suppressed. Through starvation, the cows unnamed. The cows are enticed into the revolution by promises that their milk will not be stolen but can be used to raise their calves. Their milk is then stolen by the pigs, who learn to milk them. The milk is stirred into the pig's mash every day, while the other animals are denied such luxuries. The cat Unamedon never seemed to carry out any work. 
The cat is absent for long periods and is forgiven because her excuses are so convincing and she, purred so affectionately that it was impossible not to believe in her good intentions. 36. She has no interest in the politics of the farm, and the only time she is recorded as having participated in an election, she is found to have actually voted on both sides. 37. The ducks unnamed. The roosters one arranges to wake Boxer early, and a black one acts as a trumpeter for Napoleon. The geese unnamed. One gander commits suicide by eating nightshade berries. The rats, unnamed. Classed among the wild animals, unsuccessful attempts were made to civilize them and teach them the principles of animalism. Genre and Style Edit George Orwell's Animal Farm is an example of a political satire and an allegory that was intended to have a wider application, according to Orwell himself, in terms of its relevance. 38. Stylistically, the work shares many similarities with some of Orwell's other works, most notably 1984, as both have been considered works of Swiftian satire. 39. Furthermore, these two prominent works seem to suggest Orwell's bleak view of the future for humanity, he seems to stress the potential current threat of dystopias similar to those in Animal Farm in 1984. 40. In these kinds of works, Orwell distinctly references the disarray and traumatic conditions of Europe following the Second World War. 41. Orwell's style and writing philosophy as a whole were very concerned with the pursuit of truth in writing. 42. Orwell was committed to communicating straightforwardly, given the way that he felt words were commonly used in politics to deceive and confuse. For this reason, he is careful, in Animal Farm, to make sure the narrator speaks in an unbiased and uncomplicated fashion. 42. The difference is seen in the way that the animals speak and interact, as the general moral animals seem to speak their minds clearly, while the wicked animals on the farm, such as Napoleon, twist language in such a way that it meets their insidious desires. This style reflects Orwell's proximity to the issues facing Europe at the time and his determination to comment critically on Stalin's Soviet Russia. 42. Snowball, Napoleon, and Squealer adapt old majors' ideas into a complete system of thought, which they formally name animalism, an allegoric reference to communism, not to be confused with the philosophy of animalism. Soon after, Napoleon and Squealer partake in activities associated with the humans drinking alcohol, sleeping in beds, trading which were explicitly prohibited by the Seven Commandments. Squealer is employed to alter the Seven Commandments to account for this humanization, an allusion to the Soviet government's revising of history to exercise control of the people's beliefs about themselves and their society. 69. The original commandments are. Whatever goes upon two legs is an enemy. Whatever goes upon four legs, or has wings, is a friend. No animal shall wear clothes. No animal shall sleep in a bed. No animal shall drink alcohol. No animal shall kill any other animal. All animals are equal. These commandments are also distilled into the maxim, four legs good, two legs bad. Which is primarily used by the sheep on the farm, often to disrupt discussions and disagreements between animals on the nature of animalism. Later, Napoleon and his pigs secretly revise some commandments to clear themselves of accusations of law-breaking. The changed commandments are as follows, with the changes bolded. No animal shall sleep in a bed with sheets. No animal shall drink alcohol to excess. No animal shall kill any other animal without cause. All animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others. Eventually, these are replaced with the maxims, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others, and, four legs good, two legs better, as the pig become more anthropomorphic. This is an ironic twist to the original purpose of the Seven Commandments, which was supposed to keep order within Animal Farm by uniting the animals together against the humans and preventing animals from following the humans' evil habits. Through the revision of the commandments, Orwell demonstrates how simply political dogma can be turned into malleable propaganda. 70. Orwell biographer Jeffrey Myers has written, virtually every detail has political significance in this allegory. 71. Orwell himself wrote in 1946, of course I intended it primarily as a satire on the Russian Revolution, and that kind of revolution, violent conspiratorial revolution, led by unconsciously power-hungry people can only lead to a change of masters, revolutions only affect a radical improvement when the masses are alert. 72. In a preface for a 1947 Ukrainian edition, he stated, For the past ten years I have been convinced that the destruction of the Soviet myth was essential if we wanted a revival of the socialist movement. 
On my return from Spain in 1937, I thought of exposing the Soviet myth in a story that could be easily understood by almost anyone and which could be easily translated into other languages. 73. The revolt of the animals against Farmer Jones is Orwell's analogy with the October 1917 Bolshevik Revolution. The Battle of the Cowshed has been said to represent the Allied invasion of Soviet Russia in 1918, 26 and the defeat of the White Russians in the Russian Civil War. 25. The Pigs rise to preeminence mirrors the rise of a Stalinist bureaucracy in the USSR, just as Napoleon's emergence as the farm's sole leader reflects Stalin's emergence. 27. The Pigs, appropriation of milk and apples for their own use, the turning point of the story, as Orwell termed it in a letter to Dwight MacDonald, 72, stands as an analogy for the crushing of the left-wing 1921 Kronstadt revolt against the Bolsheviks, 72, and the difficult efforts of the animals to build the windmill suggest the various five-year plans. The puppies controlled by Napoleon parallel the nurture of the secret police in the Stalinist structure, and the pig's treatment of the other animals on the farm recalls the internal terror faced by the populace in the 1930s. 74. In Chapter 7, when the animals confess their non-existent crimes and are killed, Orwell directly alludes to the purges, confessions and show trials of the late 1930s. These contributed to Orwell's conviction that the Bolshevik Revolution had been corrupted and the Soviet system become rotten. 75. Peter Edgerly for Cho and Peter Davison contend that the Battle of the Windmill, specifically referencing the Battle of Stalingrad and the Battle of Moscow, represents World War II. 25 26 During the battle, Orwell first wrote, all the animals, including Napoleon, took cover. Orwell had the publisher alter this too, all the animals except Napoleon, in recognition of Stalin's decision to remain in Moscow during the German advance. 76 Orwell requested the change after he met Yusef Chapsky in Paris in March 1945. Chapsky, a survivor of the Katyn massacre and an opponent of the Soviet regime, told Orwell, as Orwell wrote to Arthur Kosler, that it had been, the character and greatness of Stalin, that saved Russia from the German invasion. F. Other connections that writers have suggested illustrate Orwell's telescoping of Russian history from 1917 to 1943, 78G including the wave of rebelliousness that ran through the countryside after the rebellion, which stands for the abortive revolutions in Hungary and Germany, ch. IV, the conflict between Napoleon and Snowball, ch. V, paralleling, the two rival and quasi-messianic beliefs that seemed pitted against one another, Trotskyism, with its faith in the revolutionary vocation of the proletariat of the West, and Stalinism with its glorification of Russia's socialist destiny, 79 Napoleon's dealings with Wimper and the Willingdon markets, ch. v. Paralleling the Treaty of Rapallo, and Frederick's forged bank notes, paralleling the Hitler-Stalin Pact of August 1939, after which Frederick attacks Animal Farm without warning and destroys the windmill. 23. The books close, with the pigs and men in a kind of rapprochement, reflected Orwell's view of the 1943 Tehran Conference H that seemed to display the establishment of the best possible relations between the USSR and the West, but in reality were destined, as Orwell presciently predicted, to continue to unravel. 80. The disagreement between the Allies and the start of the Cold War is suggested when Napoleon and Pilkington, both suspicious, each, played an ace of spades simultaneously. 76. Similarly, the music in the novel, starting with Beasts of England, and the later anthems, parallels, the Internationale, and its adoption and repudiation by the Soviet authorities as the anthem of the USSR in the 1920s and 1930s. 81. According to Masha Gessen, the metamorphosis of the Eighth Commandment, Some Animals Are More Equal, was likely inspired by similar change of a party line which declared all Soviet people equal, the Russian nation and language suddenly became, first among equals, in official CPSU publications in 1936-1937. 82. 